this video, I cover chapters three and four of Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. Uh, in the early chapters here, she talks about this whole theory of the right and left side of the brain and how one side of the brain uh, we don't access as much, and that's the side that we need to be able to accurately draw something. And so she has these exercises to try and force us to see the confusion we have when we use the left side of the brain instead of the right side for drawing. So she has this vase and she uh, shape and she has us draw it, just tracing the line down. And as we draw it, and as we follow that line, we're supposed to say the names of the different parts of the face that we're drawing. And then as we do the mirror image to do that again, say, okay, now I'm drawing the forehead, now I'm drawing the eye, now I'm drawing the nose. And she points out that as you do this, you're going to start to get confused and you're not going to be sure, okay, do I draw inward or outward? And it's because you're trying to use both sides of the brain at once. And I could really see when I did that exercise how tricky it was. And so she says to get a better chance at shutting down the left side of your brain, try drawing things upside down. And then you're not focusing so much on the labels of, oh, now I'm drawing the knee, now I'm drawing the chair, now I'm drawing the lapel. Instead, you're just seeing lines and then drawing those lines that you see. And so, yeah, I started drawing this upside down drawing. She says, don't even pay attention to what the thing is that you're drawing. Just start at the top, or really the bottom, and move on down. And uh, just move piece by piece and just simply draw what you see. And don't think about what you're actually drawing. Just try and reproduce what is coming at you in your eyes. And so as I did this, um, I maybe was erasing more than I was supposed to. I'm really not sure, but um, I was just trying to be as accurate as I could in reproducing. And so, yeah, I'm going through and drawing this, and I, but I couldn't help but notice that this is a drawing by Pablo Picasso. And so definitely the left side of my brain starts thinking, wow, uh, there's no way that uh, one of my first exercises here I'm going to get anywhere close to the quality of Pablo Picasso. But I just tried to ignore that and just move along uh, steadily as I could and just uh, draw what I see. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm going to end up saying that in this video, but that's what I was trying to do. And um, really, I, I think that as I went along, it, it went okay uh, sort of reproducing it. But as, as you'll see as these drawings start to progress, there's one issue that I had over and over again as I was doing these exercises, and that was getting the proportions right. I feel like I could get the angle of the line right, and I could get sort of their relation to each other somewhat correct, but then just the overall proportion of the drawing would either be squished or stretched in a weird way, and so the, the original, uh, it definitely didn't look like a photocopy. It was a uh, the proportions of the original were not reproduced, and maybe that was because I was so focused on each little detail that I wasn't seeing how the proportions of the different details fit together. Now, I will say that um, her theories about right brain and left brain, I'm not sure how accurate those are in terms of today's neuroscience. If we actually have this clear division between right brain and left brain and whether the right side of our brain really does have all these properties that she assigns to it and that the left side has these others that are completely separate. Um, I will say though that the underlying just basic theory that parts of our brain operate differently and that we have different modes of thinking and different modes of operating, that makes a lot of sense and that Maybe the modes that our brain usually are in where we're speaking and using our regular language, uh, maybe those aren't the right modes to be in when you're drawing. Uh, that makes sense, whether or not the actual right brain, left brain theories are accurate. And uh, as I'm going through this upside down drawing, I definitely feel like I'm thinking in a different way and that my brain is working in a different way. I'm not so much thinking in words, you know, I'm much more just focused on uh, perception. I'm, I'm focused on how these different lines are coming together and um, the feeling of the paper and the, the pencil as it's moving along. Uh, do I need to erase here? Uh, you know, is this, uh, is this line as straight as it needs to be? Is this line uh, gonna eventually curve over here or have I curved it too early? I don't know, all of these things that I'm doing uh, are things that are 
not things that engage parts of my brain that I normally use in my day-to-day -day work life where I'm talking and writing or using the computer or something like that. And so I thought that was interesting. I, I, I can definitely lend some credence to what she's saying here with that theory. So yeah, as you see this uh, picture sort of progress, uh, you can tell that um, the neck is a little wider than it should be and uh, the shoulder isn't sitting quite on the same spot in the page as it should be uh, according to the original. But um, there are these little marks you can see at the center points of the bottom, left, right, and top edges. And those are you're supposed to try and orient using orient your drawing using those little marks. And I did my best with that, but it's just a little bit off. And I, so I guess that proportion is something that I'll have to work on as I progress. But you know, the point of this right now isn't to try and be Pablo Picasso at your first attempt. It's just to try and experiment with how your brain works. Uh, it, the most obvious spot where you can see where the, this is off is the necktie, my necktie. Um, my version is very stretched out and the head is way closer to the top and almost getting squished in a weird way to just try and fit it on the page. So all of that is uh, just uh, to illustrate that um, I've got a ways to go. But um, certainly I think this is... Uh, a lot better than I would have been able to do if I was doing this right side up because I would have been thinking the whole time, okay, now it's time to draw the guy's fingers and is this his right knuckle or is this his left knuckle? And so she says to do this several times and the workbook that she has uh, that go, goes along with this section of her textbook, it has several of these exercises right there in, uh, in the section for you to practice and the next one is a horse and uh, it's very pretty basic uh, line drawing and I thought that this one would go pretty smoothly compared to the other one that seemed a lot more complex but really it wasn't any harder or easier than the first one it was just the same sort of process of looking at the lines and moving along uh, and drawing what I see and as I'm doing that again I see that the proportions are off but I'm just trying to ignore that uh, and just uh, focus on following her instructions of uh, uh, reproducing without labeling in my mind what exactly it is I'm drawing. Um, so this drawing actually also took me close to an hour surprisingly and I'm trying to do these in a compressed amount of time. I'm, I'm trying to do them in the morning before I have to go off to work and so I don't have infinite time to sit and work on them which I guess is in a way is good because then uh, I'm not torturing myself trying to get perfect quality. The other thing that I really uh, am starting to appreciate more as I go through these different exercises is just uh, how much talent is involved, or not so much talent, but how much work is involved and skill is involved in drawing something. You know, it does take a lot of effort to really perceive something and draw it accurately. Um, I think that, that that's the thing that attracts me the most is the idea that wow, maybe someday I could, uh, instead of upside down, draw right side up something that I see and actually make it look good. Uh, okay, and so now on the next exercise that she has here, there's this second horse, and this horse has a rider on top, and there's a lot of shading uh, going on, and the image itself is not as clear. Um, but really, again, this is not particularly more difficult or less difficult than the other uh, other exercises. It's just kind of the same thing. Now, I didn't try to recreate any of the shading here because uh, I frankly don't know how to yet, but uh, I figured that it was more important to just try and get the lines, like the, the clear lines that I could discern. But, okay, I guess that is one thing that was a little more difficult on this exercise is that some lines weren't exactly lines. They were just kind of maybe more shaded patches and I thought okay well do I try and recreate that with a just a pencil line or do I just sort of let that go and I, I think in most cases I just opted for simplifying and so I would not draw a line unless it was a pretty clear line in the original um, and so as I progressed along on this one I think I was getting a little bit faster a little bit more uh, comfortable with the whole process um, and so it went a little bit quicker overall, um, but I did uh, <laughs> have the same problem with proportion on this one. The, 
uh, rider and the horse all kind of got squished down a little fatter than they were in the original. But I'm um, just doing the best I could with that. So in the book, uh, Betty Edwards, she asks if when you're in the R mode, uh, did you notice that you were somewhat unaware of the passage of time? That the time you spent drawing may, may have been long or short, but you couldn't have known until you checked it afterward? If there were people near, did you notice that you couldn't listen to what they said, in fact, that you didn't want to hear? You may have heard sounds, but you probably didn't care about figuring out the meaning of what was being said. And were you aware of feeling alert but relaxed, confident, interested, absorbed in the drawing and clear in your mind? And so for all of that, I'd say, yeah, I think that when I was really getting into that R mode, the right brain mode, I wasn't as aware of time passing. Uh, I was doing it uh, at a quiet time when there wasn't really anybody else around making any noise, but I certainly wasn't uh, paying any attention to what was going on in the environment around me. Um, and yeah, I felt like time did move more quickly. It's actually a really pleasant feeling, you know, to see uh, when you're done that, oh wow, an hour has gone by, an hour and 15 minutes has gone by, and it hasn't really felt like anything. It's uh, it's sort of the opposite of boredom. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, when you're just watching the clock slowly tick by and it feels like it's almost going backwards or not moving forward at all. This was just the opposite where you start on the task and you get so engrossed in it and you look up and think, wow, okay, now I actually need to get out the door and get to work. I, I'm, I can't believe how fast the time has gone by. And so I'm going to take that as a sign that uh, I was doing it the right way, <laughs> even though the, the product here is not all that impressive. Uh, you can see, you know, it sort of resembles it, but much more squat. But, you know, I, I was accessing that right side of the brain or that other mode of thinking. Uh, and so, yeah, that was, a, that was a, a cool experience and something that I'm looking forward to feeling more in the future. Um, and I'd be interested to hear if anybody else is trying this, if they're feeling the same sort of experience when they do these drawings. And so, yeah, I decided to go on to the next uh, exercise uh, because I, I think that you can't get uh, too much practice in, in this mode. And here's another one where really until I, I turned the picture around, there were parts of this picture that I had no idea exactly what I was drawing. I mean, at one point I thought I was, I thought the little lady was sort of holding a, a, a top or like a turnip shaped thing, but that really ended up just being part of her clothing. And uh, I really didn't catch that until I spun the picture around. But I guess sitting there guessing what is it I'm drawing is probably not great because you're not supposed to be thinking too much about what the labels are, what the, the language, uh, 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 to describe it would be, but rather just what uh, <laughs> what edges and lines and curves are you seeing? And so I think it's it's really hard because um, every day, pretty much all day, we we spend our time with that left side, and so much of the left side skills or the L mode skills are what are valued in our jobs or, or just our daily living. Uh, you know, the, the things like uh, calculation and, and language processing and that sort of thing. Uh, it's just so heavily used that the other things of the perceptions and feeling um, are disused and so they're sort of atrophied and so it's, it's hard to engage those. So um, moving along with this uh, upside down drawing here, I'm uh, sort of guessing, but at some point I'm so confused at what it is I'm trying that I stop guessing. And so I guess that's uh, a nice effect of these pictures that she's picked out to practice on, is that they are things that are sort of hard to decode as you're, as you're drawing them uh, and hard to label. And so they force you to be in that R mode, the right side mode. Something else that uh, Miss Edwards says in her book is uh, that in the creative mode, we use intuition and have leaps of insight, moments when everything seems to fall into place without figuring out things in a logical order. When this occurs, people, people often spontaneously exclaim, I've got it, or, ah, yes, now I see the picture. The classic example of the great aha is the exultant cry, Eureka, I have found it, attributed to the Greek mathematician Archimedes. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that that creative mode definitely gives us a chance to 
figure things out in a way that we might not if we're just using the that left side mode where we're trying to be uh, logical and procedural. Um, using this uh, sort of creative mode, this right side mode, helps us to access uh, more uh, more or perhaps different aspects of our brain that help us to solve problems. And so, yeah, I, I, I really uh, think that not just the techniques of drawing, but the underlying theory here is really helpful to sort of get you in a different mode of thinking. So yeah, as I, I'm working on this, I, I'm interested to see what other people do. And so let me know what you think and uh, I'll be back with another one pretty soon here. Take care.